Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Reactor Toots. React Toots, one of the two. Uh, my name is Peter and I'm kind of continuing this whole trend of breaking these perfectly good modules that Native Instruments has provided us with its Reactor program. Uh, I'm using Reactor 6 and the last take that I did of this video was about 20 minutes. I'm gonna try to shorten it just to kind of save interest and shorten time and make sure I don't bore you guys because we're gonna be breaking stuff in core cell and I am by no means a an expert on core cell. I just kind of read the labels and make determinations and assumptions based on how they label things. So uh, if you go into the library and go into studio effects, you'll see a tapish delay. So click on tapish delay and then hook it up as an effect and make sure that there's some sample running through it. Like I have this cheesy sample that I made on an MC-909. And wait, go back. Okay, so, you know, anything will do, just as long as you like the sound of it over and over again. So if I go into this tapish delay and go into this core cell macro and keep going down, I'll get to the core cell architecture and what initially might seem like it's a terrifying uh, uh, terrifying display of all this low-level programming stuff, there are some familiar terms here. If you look here, you see a delay module. If you look here, you see filters and saturators, and it's kind of no different than how you would build a delay in the primary level. It just looks a lot more intimidating. Let's go into the delay module right here. When you mouse over it, it'll actually describe it as a four-point interpolation delay. And like I said before, I'm not an expert. However, uh, if you wanted to read up on four point interpolation digital delays, you can go online and Google it and you'll get something that looks like this. Fidelity of interpolating delay lines. Um, it's really, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's complex stuff, obviously. However, I think it's safe to say that uh, when you do make these multi point delay lines, uh, these interpolating delay lines, it is meant to increase the fidelity of the delay line and make it sound cleaner. Feel free to correct me on that if I'm completely off the mark. However, when you go into this delay line, you'll actually see there is a right position macro and then these four read kind of module macros right here. And the science basically in a very, very short amount of time of digital delays is Audio gets written into a buffer, basically into memory in your computer, and then it gets read back. And these four read modules are reading it back in different positions, I believe, uh, thereby uh, making it kind of a cleaner replication of what the audio is going into. So if that is completely wrong, as I said before, feel free to correct me. What I'm doing though, is I'm just gonna muck around with how it gets written or how it gets read back I'm not entirely sure, but uh, if you look at the right position macro, you'll see a little symbol and it says W pose, which I'm making the assumption that means right position. So that gets connected to these four right here. Let's jump into this and then see where it connects to. It connects to this, this kind of obscure module right here, LX minus A, great. But let's just make a math module, like a multiply module and then bring it into the outer levels of our instrument and label it. Okay, so now that it's out into uh, the primary level, let's just make a macro to keep things organized, command, click and drag, so we make a port automatically, and then let's literally just make a knob. Knob. Let's give it a value of two, and kind of put it on its own in our uh, on our instrument. And if we raise the wet, we actually don't hear doing much. And that is because of a couple reasons. So let's go back into the tapish delay, retrace our steps a little bit, go into this macro right here, go into here, 
We see it's only connected to one of these read things, these read modules, uh, these read macros. So let's add uh, the same type of change to the rest of them. Let's duplicate it. Okay, now that that's all created for each of these four points right here, let's jump back a couple levels. Since we're working on only the left channel, let's delete the right channel for testing sake and route it to the left. And then raise our wet volume. Oh, there we go. We hear that there's all sorts of pitch shifting happening, and that's because the uh, the way that it's being read back now is kind of changing and uh, changing its speed, and it's not actually compensating for the change of speed. So it's basically running out of space in the buffer because it's reading through it so fast, and then it has basically silence. So it has all these nasty clicks when I manipulate it. So let's smooth that out, and we can smooth that out in the core cell. Go back in and maybe even here, this is fine. If I go into library and I go to da, 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 control smooth. And then the first one will let me smooth any kind of changes that I make with this control over uh, X amount of seconds, I believe. So if you mouse over that, that's what it says, linear ramps. So I can right click and make a const, a constant and then Put that into time and then maybe do 0 0.2. Something like that. And let's test it out. No more clicks. Very cool. So that being said, I'm only, this is a stereo delay. And if I want some interesting stereo effects, I'm going to need to basically reproduce that architecture uh, on the second delay. Uh, delay module right here, or I can kind of cheat a little bit and duplicate this and then just mimic the connections made. So let's do that. Okay, now that that's done with, there is some fun to be had uh, with the right channel, specifically if we wanted to do some cool stereo effects, we can add another import right here and let's call it offset. And then let's make a math module of just add and then combine these values, then route it, <laughs> then route it straight into the uh, right channels delay line right there. And then make a, another import to break out that offset parameter right there. And once we're out, let's route it into our module in the making or macro in the making right here and then add a knob and then call it offset. Maybe call this mod and just kind of experiment to see what values go go well with it. Let's unlock it right here. And we're not going to hear it unless we go back into here and back into here and then route, route the right channel to the output. So let's jump back to the panel. Oh yeah. Now we're getting all sorts of weird stereo stuff. Like maybe pitching this up two octaves or something. Like I don't quite, I don't even quite know what's happening. But that's kind of the beauty. Cool. So that's basically an interesting way to get acquainted with core cell uh, if those of you who aren't familiar there's no real reason to be super afraid of it if you 
just kind of remember core basics of uh, signal flow and then pay attention to how things are labeled, uh, it's really not a ton different than primary. Uh, you can do amazing things with it, for sure. However, uh, it's always fun to get uh, acquainted with something that you don't understand by breaking it and kind of experimenting and not, you don't really have to know what you're doing. It's a really fun way to learn things. So, hope you found this interesting and informative, and I will be sure to make some videos in the future. All right, thanks.